We met with um, Governor Walker at uh, 1020 this morning. We met for uh, about a half an hour. And um, I thought overall it was a really, really uh, good meeting. Uh, we um, met at the governor's mansion and had breakfast this morning. Uh, with me is Michelle Nichols. Michelle Nichols is the uh, chief um, academic officer for um, Boys and Girls Clubs of Dane County. And she run all of our um, educational and uh, employment-based programs that we run um, here in the county. Uh, we started the meeting off talking about, um, I shared with the governor how our community was hurting and that um, so far uh, our organization had been in touch with the police chief, with the mayor, and with uh, the county executive. And I pleaded um, with him to uh, reach out to um, the family um, of Mr. Robinson. Um, the governor immediately um, asked if he could get her number and call her right away. So we gave the, um, the governor, um, I wanted to make sure that the mother was okay with it first. So I met with her at noon and she welcomed uh, a phone call uh, from the governor and he's going to um, have a conversation with her um, today. Uh, he talked about his own kids and said that he was um, grieving um, for the family. And he also talked about empathy and uh, our state showing empathy uh, towards this family. And so that was the nature of our conversation around that. Then immediately, um, me and Michelle talked to the governor around how do we move things forward for our kids. Uh, you know, part of my responsibility as the CEO of Boys and Girls Clubs of Dane County is to make sure that our kids can have great futures. And way too many of our kids don't have um, um, opportunities that is going to create a bright future for them. A lot of times, if you ask young people what, what do they want to be when they grow up, a lot of times you hear kids say, well, I want to be in an NBA or I want to be in an NFL. The problem with that is um, there's 87, there's 1.1 million kids play high school uh, football and basketball every year. Then when you go to the collegiate level, there's about 87,000 that play. But on draft day, between the NBA and the NFL, there's only 266 jobs available. Then when you look at the average lifespan of an NFL player, even if you make it to the NBA or the NFL, you still have to have a career. So I shared with the governor that I would like to um, see uh, some African-American leaders work with him to create a statewide job initiative for African-American men. So when you look at uh, the issues um, here in Dane County, issues pertaining to African-American families statewide, uh, that's an issue that our state have to address. And when you see these reports that come out, um, whether it's the Pew Foundation or the Annie Casey Foundation, uh, we have to put some real um, uh, solutions in place to be able to address that. We also talked about youth internships. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we want to make sure, and we realize that every kid won't go to college and every kid uh, won't graduate from high school. And there's thousands and thousands of corporations here in town. Why can't we create a statewide youth internship and announce a major initiatives, uh, initiative to put thousands and thousands of kids to work during the summer months? Uh, he seemed to really like those ideas, and uh, he, wants to, he wants to follow up. Um, we also um, talked about, um, Michelle talked a little bit about a mother's program and the importance of uh, having mothers involved uh, in advocacy work. And I'm going to let Michelle talk a little bit about that. And then once she finishes, I'm going to talk about um, a college preparatory program that we discussed. Yeah, so you know, one of the things that I was able to share with the governor was just really talking authentically from the heart as a mom. Um, and the governor has a 19-year-old just like I have a 19-year-old. And so to, to Michael's point, it was really trying to bring home kind of a the humanity plea about this is really a tragedy, right? Regardless of the circumstances, it's a tragedy for our community. And um, that there are mothers that I've been working with and talking to, and we've just now started talking about how to organize and mobilize a message about 
the plight of mothers who are raising African-American sons in this community and what do we do and where do we weigh in. And we've been to several of the commission meetings this week. We went to um, the Public Safety Review Committee last night and the previous night it was um, Fire and Police Commission. We've just met with the mayor today. And one of the things that I was able to share with the governor was that when you listen to fire and police um, from the two commissions that we've attended, they're talking about kind of the lack of additional resources for young people that they're encountering um, in this community who either have mental health issues, who have additional just life challenges. And the, the employment issue is a big issue for us to address, as well as the social emotional um, well-being of our young people in this community. But I feel like the, the governor, like he really made direct eye contact. It felt like that connected with him, that we're, talk we're not just talking about high school programs, which are important in, in our public schools, but what about young people who are still 19 to 25, still trying to figure out who they are, still needing opportunities, and how do we really create opportunities, not only across the state, but right here in our backyard. So I felt like he connected with that. And, and I think I appreciate it. Uh, we didn't feel rushed. We actually were like, Governor, we gotta go. Um, every time he got up to get ready to uh, end the meeting, it just kept going on and on and on. And so I felt like he was sincere. Um, he wanted to follow up. I think he listened. Uh, his chief of staff was there. He also had uh, an education policy person that was there um, in the room with us. Uh, I shared with him some of our results around uh, our AVID TOPS program. Uh, I think that program can be replicated in school districts like Milwaukee and Beloit. At the end of the day, we need to make sure that kids of color our poor white kids, kids who traditionally have not, who have not done well in school, how do we put the right interventions in place to make sure that we support kids in our public schools? And so I gave him a copy of our WISCAPE uh, report from uh, the Wisconsin Hope Lab and asked him if he would study that. Um, and uh, the meeting ended about a half an hour later. And that was pretty much the nature uh, of our conversation. Who initiated the meeting? I did. So I contacted the governor uh, on Monday uh, afternoon. Um, within hours, they responded right back. And today we had the meeting. He, uh, it was originally scheduled um, at his office, and then he moved it to the uh, governor's mansion uh, for breakfast. Do you know if he has spoken to uh, the parents or the family? Of I just gave him a number about a half hour ago. So uh, he wanted to call right away, but I wanted to make sure um, that the mother was okay with it. And so I met with her to uh, close out. We started a GoFundMe account. Um, we had committed on Friday night that we were uh, to try to raise $20,000 to bury her son. We hit that goal today. So we closed out the account, and uh, at that meeting, I said, how do you feel about Governor Walker um, giving you a call? And she said, Mike, I actually would welcome that. So I immediately uh, sent the phone up number over to his office, and the governor gave me his word that he would call her today. Do you know when the funeral's going to be? They're working on it. So she actually left to go make those plans. Um, they're going to announce it today through um, a website, through a, a funeral home, but she asked me not to share um, any specifics. Did they, I don't know if there was any discussion of the actions that are going to be happening this afternoon and this evening by groups, I mean, talking about incarceration rates, talking about, um, you know, some of the incidents that have transpired the last week, either with the governor or with yeah. the family, either one. Yeah, we got to connect with some of the groups like Justified Anger and United Way. So what I'm, and a bunch of other groups, and what I'm hoping is that we could put together, including either, you know, Young, Gifted, and Black needs to be a part of that conversation. So what I, what I have tried to do over the last few days is try to be a, a bridge builder to all those groups. I have a connection to every last one of them. I think we all care about our city and we all care about our state. Uh, all of our views may be different, but our, our collective leadership is going to be critical. Uh, for the kids um, of this community and all of the disparities that are taking place right here in Dane County. Uh, when you see that this city makes up five, per African Americans make up 5% of the city population, but our Dane County Jail is 44%. It hurt at my core to visit the Dane County Jail and see that many African American men behind bars. So uh, I think if we can catch these young people earlier, 
or inspire them through internships, all these great companies. Some got two, three hundred employees and you don't see one person of color. We got to change that and make sure that we change the opportunity equation for our kids. It's the opportunity equation for our kids. And that's what our babies need. Other than committing to talk to the mother of uh, Tony Robinson and, and wanting to follow up with you, did the governor make any other promises or any other commitments to the ideas you put forward? I actually asked him not to. So I said, you know, I, I, I actually told him at the beginning, I said, you don't have to make one commitment to, to me today. I'm going to make my plea, and I just hope you listen and hear me. And so for, for, for I, I rambled off for 15 minutes, and he didn't say a word. And, um, and I was actually surprised. He was like, yep, I called my mother. Yep, I would love to follow up with uh, you and your team. Um, he said, I support Boys and Girls Club. I told him I thought it was important that uh, he talked about that he has had meetings with uh, Mayor Soglin. And I said, you know, Madison is part of the state. And I want to make sure our babies in this city don't get left out. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we had we had that conversation. So I thought it went I thought it went great. Um, and I actually I actually applaud them for following up so so quickly. Michael, you, you put out a yesterday <laughs> saying that you hoped people attended that rally at three o'clock, but you did not want students like they did Monday to leave class early to go to this. They are planning on that West High School. Yeah. Why is that important you they stay in school today? Yeah, so, you know, we supported them the first day they had the rally. Our kids' voices need to be heard. I want them to know that, that the Boys and Girls Club CEO and all of our staff and all of our community leaders want to hear from our kids' voices. All we're asking them to do is to demonstrate their civic responsibility during non-instructional time. Don't leave school. Uh, you can do it. You can, you can participate in this process through structured activities in school. You can do it before school. You can do it after school. You can do it on weekends. But I just don't want to have kids walking out the classroom. I mean, we have taxpayers that pay those kids to be there. They have a responsibility to themselves to learn. And I don't want them to have one event turn into two events and then turn into three events. And you look out, look at what, look at, look at, and it, then you end up looking up and they've been out of school for a week. These kids cannot afford to miss school. So I just want to strongly encourage them to be safe, to go to school, to be a part of this process. We welcome their voices, but just don't do it during school time. Where do you go from here? I want to see our city address these um, these disparity issues. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna throw this city. Um, some of the national press that have come here um, is using some sensationalized words, and I do believe that this city is a great city, and just like any city, urban city in America, um, we're gonna have challenges. And so if we're going to be a progressive city, we got to be progressive for all children and families in this community. And when you got um, the number of uh, kids of color not graduating from high school, when you look at the unemployment rate, um, those are real issues that create an environment where um, our kids don't feel safe, our families don't feel welcomed um, in the city. And I believe we can change that equation if we create a broad vision, if we can get uh, away from some of the polarized politics and focus on children and families, I have no doubt in my mind that this city can do it if we put our <coughs> mind to it. Was there any conversation about the investigation into the actual shooting itself? Yeah, the, the yeah, the governor met with the attorney, is it titled attorney general? Mm -hmm. He met with the attorney general. Uh, they had a conversation about it. He did share some detail with us, but I can't remember the well, nature. He, what he said is that his impression was that the timeliness of reporting out would be better um, in the in the Madison Tony Robinson incident than it had been in Milwaukee. And I, so he was referring to details that he seemed to be privy to, and that was kind of all he said. But he did he seemed to feel confident that the timeliness would be better yeah. locally. We also um, gave him, and I wanted the public to be, at the end of the day, you know, I work for boys and girls clubs who work for the kids and families in this community. So I shared with him, I said, we want to be transparent and we shared with the public what our agenda is going to be with you. And I said, there was a lot of comments on my Facebook page uh, with a lot of recommendations from a lot of different people. 
Some people are optimistic. Some people have no faith in you at all. I would ask that you read um, that document and just listen to the voices of those who are trying to reach you. So I handed him uh, a thread of my Facebook post, and he took it, and uh, I believe he's going to read it. I think that's, I mean, he didn't say that explicitly, but I think that's what he was referring to. Yeah. Is there any talk about the budget proposal to, for more funding for this investigative um, agency with the state that is now mandated to look at all these issues? Yeah, we didn't, we didn't get into that level of detail. Other questions? So do you feel like he is going to make it, I mean, we, we've reached out to his office and haven't heard anything back yet about what, your meeting from yeah. his end of things. I mean, do you expect him to put something out saying things that he may do or anything like that after this? Well, he, he I told him that I was reporting back to the community mm -hmm. on our meeting, so he he, he does know that. And uh, you know, I just got to take him at his word. And he, he, he wants to have a follow-up meeting. He gave us the cell, um, uh, cell phone number, um, and we're going to follow up. And so you all are going to report on what happened. And I will see how it play out. Uh, I will say the governor has been supportive of uh, Boys and Girls Clubs uh, statewide. Uh, but we want to make sure that, that support also uh, go towards our public schools. And I think that if the right bridges are uh, built and the right conversations take place, I'm always an optimistic person. And, um, and I think if we can figure out a way to work together, we can get beyond some of the polarization that's taking place um, in our community. Have you met with the governor before on any previous issues? Yeah, so uh, the First Lady comes to our annual uh, Youth of the Year banquet on a regular basis every year, our statewide Youth of the Year banquet. Uh, she comes to the Boys and Girls Clubs uh, once a year to bake cookies with our kids. Mm -hmm. Uh, our kids go to the governor's mansion uh, once a year during the holidays to um, I think they like eat cookies and stuff with the with the governor. But I've never had a uh, a one on one meeting with him like this one. And I wanted to bring Michelle because Michelle's a lot smarter than me, and uh, and she runs all of the educational programs. So I wanted our education chief um, with us, and and she did a great job talking about how. Uh, our kids are graduating from high school. They're going to college. They, um, their GPAs are higher. Their attendance is better. And this community deserves to invest more resources uh, in our kids' lives at the end of the day. And I think our philanthropic community and our businesses got to step up. I encouraged him. I said, whatever that, whatever that program may look like, whether it's a, an employment program, imagine if the governor came out and said, I want to put 30,000 people to work and I need local corporations to work with the Boys and Girls Club, the YMCA, the Urban Leagues, the United Way, and there's a grand vision around doing that in partnership with the community, uh, I think sends the right message. Uh, in Louisville, um, Kentucky, that mayor announced 2,500 internships for kids in that city. And we announced, you know, it's not a lot, we announced a, about a month ago 675 pay internships for kids in this community over a three-year period. But in reality, that's nothing. It's nothing. It's a, it's a small attempt on our part to try to do something. These kids are earning 10 to $15 an hour, but why can't we put every kid in the city that want to work in some sort? And the companies are here. They're looking for diversity. And if we're going to close this employment gap, we got to partner on these kinds of initiatives. And I will, I will say that one of the things I feel like we try to anchor to the whole issue of like internships and youth employment and all of that was we had put in the folder, um, as Michael said, our Avid Tops program, which is a college readiness program. And so since the policy advisor was in the room, I, I tried to delicately talk about the importance of access to college still being part of the dream, right? And that we're preparing kids for a future education or future training that will lead to the next generation of a workforce, but if they don't have the educational opportunities, we're not gonna make, we're not gonna make it. So one of the things that I hope to do is to follow up with the policy advisor um, to keep talking about the importance of our public schools, our college readiness programs, and access to higher education. And, and the Shells program is amazing. We're the only Boys and Girls Club in the United States they have this Avid Tops program. 
There's 4,000 AVID programs nationwide. We're the only one in the state of Wisconsin that's deemed a demonstration site where we could train school superintendents and, and principals and teachers on how to replicate uh, this kind of program. And we think it can work. This kind of program can work in public schools, but it does cost money to run those kinds of programs. And we hope whether it's this program or another program, our schools deserve support. And, and we want to figure out how to work with him or anybody else to make sure that our kids graduate from high school. And when I say our kids, it's all of our kids, black kids, white kids, Native American kids, but particularly uh, low income kids, because those are the ones who typically perform the worst. Have you spoken when, in your conversations with the family? Have, did they have any thoughts about the planned demonstrations that were coming up today and, and what they hope people talk about beyond mm -hmm. their comments, obviously, a couple of days ago? Yeah, so when I spoke with the mom today, she supports these demonstrations as long as they are um, peaceful. Uh, she planned on coming to um, some of the um, demonstrations. She came to the visual that we had. Uh, on Sunday night, the family came out on Saturday, and they made, they made it very clear the first night I met her, she said, I'm not angry at the police. I'm not. We're not anti-police. And, uh, and that's, they, they have been consistent um, with that message. And what I attempted to do was to uh, just bridge some of those, those um, uh, just build some of those bridges, whether it be with law enforcement officials in the African American community. And I think what happened, we allowed this community to vent and to express their emotions. And that's why we had the visual, that's why we had the event at Pastor G's church. They did not do that in Ferguson. And um, in this city, you don't see us flipping over cars, you don't see our kids and adults uh, looting businesses. People are speaking with their voices. And I want to encourage people to continue to do that in a proactive, productive way. And let's demonstrate to the world that, that this is a good city, a good city with challenges. Uh, we'll get beyond this. But once we get beyond this, how do we make sure that it doesn't happen to another kid? And how do we deal with some of the systemic issues that um, cause our kids not to have great futures? How do you feel like the family's reaction has shaped the community's reaction? I think if they would have took another tone, the response would have been totally different. You know, um, when, um, when I got the phone call from the fire department Friday night, uh, I had met with Chief Covo, and while I was with Chief Covo, I got a phone call from a family friend to go directly to meet with the mother. Even in her pain and her tears, she didn't want violence. And she made that clear um, the minute she sat down with me. Uh, she's in a much better place right now than what she was on Friday night. Uh, she's right now at a funeral home making um, funeral arrangements. And um, she's in a better place, but this community is going to need her. Once all the fanfare go away, uh, she's going to need support, her and her family, over the next year or so. And anytime you lose a child, I just, I just couldn't imagine losing my son. Michelle has uh, boys. And uh, she's going through a tough time right now, and this community needs to grieve um, with her. Uh, yeah, N I C H E L L E, and then Nichols, N I C H O L S. And your exact title here is Chief Academic Officer.